Welcome back, JC here, and here is how to connect your D4R2 receiver to the X-Racer F303 flight controllers. I'll be covering the 2.1, 3.0, and 3.1 all in the same video. Uh, personally, I will be using the 2.1 just because it's slightly more confusing, uh, but I will walk you through the differences between the other versions. I'll be leaving links to my D4R2, X-Racer F303, and Tyrannus playlist in the top right of your screen and description below. So check out those other playlists for other helpful videos. So if we look at the uh, flight controller, these are going to be your input pins over here, uh, specifically these top pins. And we have channels 1 to 8, and then another pin on the very end, which is for SBUS. Uh, which is technically UART number three, but we're not dealing with that uh, because this is not a SBUS receiver, it's a PPM receiver. PPM is actually shared with channel number one, and we will configure that in beta flight in just a second, but uh, basically your signal wire is just going to go onto the signal pin on channel number one. And this is for all versions of this flight controller. Now to power the receiver, all of these middle pins are power pins. All of these pins on the edge are ground pins. If you have the 3.0 or the 3.1, you can place your power and ground wire on any of these power and ground pins. It's completely up to you. Now you could even do these three pins in a row if you choose. On the 2.1 like I'm using right now, if you plug in a LiPo battery, then all of these pins will get five volts, but with only the USB cable plugged in, the only pins that gets five volts is this pin right here where I have this red power wire. And for that reason, that is why I recommend uh, using these pins on the end because uh, unless you just want to plug in a LiPo battery every time you want to make changes and set stuff up to your receivers, um, I mean, that's a headache. So that's why I recommend using these. But once again, that's only for the 2.1. Now if we go to the D4R2, without this jumper, it's a PWM receiver, meaning a, you will get four channels with a signal wire on each and every channel, plus a po power wire and a ground wire, so we will have a minimum of six wires and only four channels. Uh, but instead, if you take this jumper that came with it and place it on the signal pins for channels three and four, that will convert it to PPM, meaning we will now get eight channels with only three wires. One signal wire, which will uh, send all eight channels, plus power, plus ground. So I will just take my three wire server cable that I soldered on to the fly controller. Uh, you don't have to solder it on, you can use pin headers if you want, that's up to you. And we will plug this in in the same order. And it's going to be the top pins, not these back ones. That's actually channel number two. And also make sure you have it in the right order with the signal wire on the outside, uh, power in the middle, and ground towards the inside. Now for telemetry. If you look at these pins here, uh, this is UART number one, and this is UART number two. I'm not going to recommend using UART number one because it's tied in with the USB. The only thing I would ever put on UART number one is uh, maybe an on-screen display, but I would I would even avoid that, uh, but that's going to be a different video. Point is, just put it on UART number two and save yourself some headache. If you look on these pins here, you will see RX2, which is receive for UART number two. Then we have TX2, which is transmit for UART number two. Telemetry needs a transmit pin, so that's why I have mine soldered on to TX2. This will apply to the 2.1 and 3.1. If you have the 3.0, they actually accidentally crisscross the receive and transmit. So if you have the 3.0, you will be placing this wire on RX2 instead. And this wire that I'm using is actually the four pin, four wire connector that came with the D4R2. And I just removed the wires that we don't need. So if I plug it in, you will see the only wire I'm using is the one on the corner. These three other wires I just removed. You can take a razor blade and lift up the tabs and pull them out individually. Uh, or you can just cut it off with wire cutters. It's it's up to you. So now with everything wired, I will just plug in my USB cable and that will power the flight controller and receiver both. At this time, if you have not yet bound your receiver, then you need to go ahead and do that. Uh, just look in my D4R2 or Tyrannus playlist and you'll find videos on how to do that. 
So now uh, I've already bound mine once I turn on my transmitter. Hey JC, welcome back. Just give it a second. Cheat mode active. And now I have the saw green light. Once you get the saw green light, that means that it's properly bound and everything is working, and you can now continue. So if we go into beta flight, um, by the way, if you have not flashed new firmware to your flight controller and it's not letting you use beta flight once you try to connect, uh, that's because you have to flash beta flight firmware. If you're using the uh, version 2.1, then you will be using the SP Racing F3 firmware. If you have the version 3.0 or 3.1, then you use X-Racer SPI. So now we just want to go to ports, and because we put the telemetry wire on UART number 2, we will come over here to telemetry and turn on free sky, then save and reboot. Now go to configuration, scroll down, make sure that this is set to RX PPM then scroll down and turn on telemetry then save and reboot now everything should be working so let's go ahead and test it go to the receiver tab move your joysticks around and uh, roll pitch y'all and throttle should all be moving on your screen if you have created any switches you can go ahead and test those out now things are about to get real hybrid mode stunt mode active cheat mode active okay everything's working now in the Tyrannus, we want to press menu to go to our model, hold down the page button to go backwards a page to telemetry, scroll down to discover new sensors, and press enter. Once it's done, press enter again to stop discovery, and here is all of your telemetry sensors. So that's going to do it guys. Um, like I said, check out those other playlists for other helpful videos, and I will see you there.